Hello everyone. In this lesson, we're going to talk about where can you teach online? What are the sites that are available? And what are some of the features that each of these different sites offer where you can teach online? So let's go ahead and talk about the details. So where are all the places you can teach online? On this slide, I've listed some of the sites that I've had experience with. There are a lot of others and the marketplace is changing very rapidly. The first one on the list is Udemy and they're probably the largest course offering site in the world. I have a lot of experience out there and we'll go through the details of the kind of the advantages and disadvantages of hosting on Udemy. Skillshare is another terrific site. It's a little bit different than Udemy that it's more of a subscription model and not selling a course on a case-by-case -case basis. If you want to do some self-hosting, you want to have your own website, I'll go into a little bit with Thinkific and Teachable, and I've had experience with both of those platforms. The other one is YouTube, and we've talked a lot about YouTube in this course, but uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about it here. And the uh, next bullet down says many others. There are a lot of others out there. I just haven't had experience with those, but it, the, as I say, the marketplace is changing. As well as self-publishing your video courses, if you want to do a book, and if you're doing all the research on the course, it's not that much more effort to go ahead and develop an ebook, or perhaps you have a strategy that I've developed now where I like to publish them together. Amazon Kindle is the world's largest publishing spot, so you can certainly publish books out there, both in ebook and hard copy. And if you go ahead and publish a book for an ebook, it's very simple to do the hard copy book as well. And hard copy books for me have actually outsold my ebooks quite readily. I was very surprised by this, but hard copy books are still selling very well. Then you can also look at some some book aggregators. Draft to Digital is one that I use and one that I'm just starting to use is Ingram Spark. And we'll talk a little bit more about each one of these sites in the next few slides. The first site we'll talk about is Udemy and I've put the URL for Udemy out there. It is a gigantic online marketplace. There's an unbelievable number of courses out there. You set the pricing for your classes, however it's tiered pricing and you select from a drop down. The minimum price for a class is $19.99 and I believe it goes up to $250 and there's increments there. You will get 50% of the revenue from a sale that Udemy makes. So most classes sell for $9.99 on sale. It doesn't take long for you to be a student on Udemy to realize that every month courses go on sale for $9.99. And that's if you decide to participate in Udemy's marketing. You can choose not to, but however, there's not much of an advantage to be on Udemy if you're not in their marketing program. So an example, if you sell 100 classes at $9.99, you make approximately $500. And there's no fee to get started. So it's a really great place to get started. There's a couple of disadvantages of being on Udemy. The primary disadvantage is that most courses will only sell for $9.99. So you see these kind of ridiculous sales where a course that's listed as $199 goes on sale for $9.99. So if you really have an enterprise level course that you're trying to sell for several hundred dollars and has a lot of rich content on it, this is probably not the right platform for you, you to do. However, you could use a strategy to use a smaller course, a subset of an enterprise course and sell it at a lower course, but it's lower price point. But you have to be comfortable at selling your classes and really making about $5 a class. Again, it's you can make it up by volume. So the types of classes you want to sell are lower price courses where you can really get a lot of volume. The other major disadvantage of Udemy is you don't get student email addresses. So you can't directly con contact your students. You can put out marketing messages to your existing students and that's a great advantage to have. But Udemy controls the content of that and you're not allowed to put links to outside sites to kind of upsell your students. So it's a kind of a mixed bag. It's a huge marketplace but they're restrictive on the kind of content and the way that you connect with your students. So that's a lot about Udemy. It's still a great platform even though there's some disadvantages. You'll just probably want to be selective about the content that you put out there. So let's go ahead and move on to the next platform. So the next site we'll talk about is Skillshare. Skillshare, I've included the URL out there for Skillshare. It's an online course marketplace, but it's different than Udemy. It's a subscription-based model and students pay a subscription fee that's 
around $10 a month, maybe a little bit less for an entire year. And they, they have access to all of the courses on Skillshare. So to compensate the instructors, you get paid by the minute that videos are watched by your students. The current rate's around six cents a minute. It fluctuates up and down. It can be lower than that. It can be higher than that. But an example is if somebody watched your course for a thousand minutes in a month, you would make about $60. So this rate changes over time and it's, and it's determined by a formula by Skillshare. There's no charge to get started for posting classes or being an instructor on Skillshare. And they pay on the 16th of the month uh, following the end of the month. So they pay very quickly. So it's only about two weeks after you get done with the month and you get paid and they put that into a PayPal account. And so payment is very smooth. I like teaching on Skillshare. It's a much more relaxed marketplace. It's a little bit easier to market content to your students. It's probably easier to generate a following here. And there's no reason you can't teach on both platforms. I have content on both Udemy and on Skillshare. Also, there's no review process on Skillshare. You can simply publish content and put it out right away. So I, for me, I, I really like Skillshare a little bit better than Udemy. It's a more relaxed marketplace. The student, it seems to be easier to co connect with the students and, and get a dialogue going. But that's just my personal preference. I do teach on both. But that's it for Skillshare. Very easy place to get started. Let's go ahead and look at the next platform. So the next two packages we'll talk about are really self-hosting packages. The first one is Thinkific. And I've had a Thinkific site for a while. I'm currently not hosting my own courses. I've decided just to publish on other online platforms and not self-host my own courses. But I have done it in the past. You have the complete freedom to publish whatever you want. So you have complete control over the, the website. You can host videos. You can customize the website. You can host video lessons and quizzes and downloadable material. You can completely set your own prices for your courses. So there are really no transaction fees with Thinkific. Packages start at $0 a month and up. Actually, they've removed their free tier now. So I think don't think Thinkific has a free tier any, anymore. So the, I think the minimum now is $49 a month. And you can use your own custom domain. If you own a domain name and you want to have it to your own custom online course site, Thinkific is a way to do that. You are completely responsible for your own marketing. Thinkific does not help you in any way market your courses. This is a lot different than being on a site like Udemy or Skillshare where there's already a huge student community out here. All these self-hosting options, you really have to understand how to drive traffic in a pretty significant way to make money to put them on your own site. But if you already have a, a, a following of people and most people don't, it's a difficult thing to get, but you do have a lot more freedom and you can sell higher end courses. So if you're really thinking about courses where people are gonna pay several hundred or several thousand dollars and there's really deep content there, then self-hosting is probably the way to go for more expensive courses where you're really looking to have fewer students but to have more kind of complete freedom to deliver that and to really deliver more expensive content is Thinkific. So let's go ahead and look at another self-hosted platform in the next slide. Another self-hosting platform is Teachable, and I put the link for that. It's another very similar to Thinkific. Again, you're responsible for your own marketing. You can host video lessons and quizzes. They're very comparable packages. Packages start at $29 a month. I believe the lower end package here starts with a transaction fee, but these things change over time and they offer different things. They also usually both Teachable and Thinkific offer sales around Black Friday where they'll have a bundle of different things that they offer. It's a very flexible platform. Both of them are really solid platforms. There's a ton of other self-hosted platforms out there as well. I've only included these two. These seem to be some of the leading ones. There are a lot of others out there, so you can do some research on that. But again, the, the big theme for me is if you go into self-hosting, you really need to have a solid marketing component to be able to make money at it. So let's go ahead and move on to the next area. The next area we'll talk about is YouTube. It's not really a course delivery platform per se, but it's the second largest search engine in the world. And the amount of content and the amount of activity that you 
see on YouTube is unbelievable. So I really recommend that you get a start with YouTube and that you at least host some of your videos out there. You can get paid by running ads. So when you first do this, you, you won't make a lot of money, trust me. You'll be making pennies a day. However, you will start generating traffic out there and you, you can put ads for your courses. You can also put some of your content out there to see how people receive your content. And it's really an excellent guide to start delivering better content on other platforms as well. You need a, a significant amount of traffic to make money with ads. You need really start getting thousands of views to really make uh, money on that. However, you can put affiliate links in there. So what I mean by that is you can put coupons or discount links to your courses in there and start driving traffic to other platforms where you are selling your content. So it's a, I think it's really a, a key, uh, almost a must if you're going to teach online to have a YouTube channel. There's no tra uh, charge to get started. It, it will require patience. Your channel will start in a very small way and it will take some time to build it up. However, once you build it up, it really helps you gain momentum. So that's a little bit about YouTube. You could really uh, have an entire course around YouTube and some of the opportunities around that. So let's go ahead and move on to our last platform. So the last example we'll talk about is Amazon Kindle or Kindle Direct Publishing. Amazon is the largest book retailer in the market. So you can publish both ebooks and hard copy books. So this is self-publishing. You can upload content to the website. There's a brief approval process. It usually only takes a couple of hours and then your books are available in the marketplace. You can set your own pricing. There's a different tier pricing. There's a 70% revenue tier that goes between $2.99 and $9.99 on ebooks. And if you publish within that band, you get 70% of the revenue. If you're outside of that band, you can charge higher prices or lower prices, but you get 30% of the revenue. So Amazon also has a, a calculator that helps you determine the pricing to see where maybe the best spot might be for that. Hard copy books are printed on demand, so there's no inventory. So once you set up your hard copy book, you upload a manuscript, and that book is printed on demand when a student, or a customer rather, orders a book. It's an amazing process. It only takes them about a day to turn that around. There's no charge to get started with this, and it's an excellent way to leverage your content to multiple channels. So let's go ahead and look at the summary of what we've talked about in this lesson. In summary, we've talked about a lot of different places that you can get started online. So there's a, and even more sites that I haven't listed. I recommend that you start on YouTube and maybe get an idea of what the material your potential students will like and get some feedback. It's difficult to establish your own teaching site on Teachable or Thinkific without really having a solid marketing plan. However, if you're good at marketing and you already have some existing contents, this is a really excellent way to establish your own brand and really sell some higher end courses and generate some significant revenue. I also recommend that after you get started to deliver your content to multiple channels. There's no reason that if you put a class out on Udemy to go ahead and publish it on Skillshare or some other channels as well. Ebooks have been successful for me. I like to combine the ebooks and the video courses and do them both. So lots of opportunity. Thank you so much. I know this has been a long lesson, but there's lots of opportunity out there and to cover all these takes some time. So thanks again, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please click the like button. And if you want more material like this, consider subscribing to my channel. Also, if you'd like to pick up a copy of this book and learn more about teaching online, here's a link to my book on Amazon. It's also in the, in the video description as well. Thanks again. See you later. Bye-bye.